All right, welcome to part four of our video series. In this video, I'll walk you through the installation process and setup process for our delivery controller. So again, you're gonna want the software installed for, for Citrix and Zen app and Zen desktop, Citrix virtual apps, virtual desktops. So you'll see I have that here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna double click this on my VM. And if you remember from my first video, um, I think it was four gigs of RAM and four vCPU can handle around 5,000 connections. So size your environment and your delivery controllers appropriately to match that. Um, but what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna run the actual application here and you'll see I have two options. I have Citrix Virtual Apps and Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktops. They're really the same thing. One Citrix went to this FMA type architecture. So the 7.x architecture, excuse me, um, 7.x architecture, they brought together both Zen app and Zen desktop to be managed under a single management console to have a, a same architecture overview. So you can really choose either one. It's really going to come down to the actual workload operating system you're going to be utilizing as well as what licenses you're going to use in your environment. Uh, but as we do that, you'll see we have a lot of different options. We have delivery controller, virtual delivery agent, as well as the other components on the bottom here. Of course, we're going to choose delivery controller for this part of the series. And you want to just accept the terms here. In which case, you'll see all the defaults are selected, but we're going to try to keep this as production friendly as possible. So let's uncheck the storefront server. Let's uncheck the license server just because we, need, we are going to install those on separate VMs or we already have installed those on separate VMs. So choose next here. Um, install Windows Remote Assistance. If you want to use the shadowing capabilities of Citrix Director, um, keep it enabled. Essentially, you're able to, to go in and monitor somebody else's virtual desktop. So there are a lot of customers that do utilize this, so I'll keep that selected for now. Um, automatically for the ports, so just fine, port 80, 443. In which case now it should be doing a prereq check in which it'll check to see, hey, what's actually installed or not. And once it does that, we're going to choose finish. And depending on what prereqs are already pre-installed on your virtual machine, um, it may take more time. It may ask you to reboot as you're going through it. All right, so if all went well, you should have had all check marks and it should have prompted you for, for checking diagnostic information if you choose to do that. Essentially, um, that will just send information over to Citrix and will ask you to enter your Citrix credentials if you do, do choose to, to do that as your option. And then following that, you should see all check marks for your studio console, your delivery controller, as well as your director server. and once you hit finish, Studio should pop up and that's what I have open right here. So we have three different options available with Studio. We can deliver applications at desktops to your users. We can enable remote PC access or we can scale our deployment by adding a second delivery controller, which I'll walk through shortly. Uh, but the first step is to do a site setup. We wanna choose deliver applications and desktops to your users. In which case we're gonna choose an empty unconfigured site and you're gonna to wanna to name your site. So this is independent of anything else. It's just a naming convention item. So feel free to call it what you'd like. I'm gonna call mine site. And then here we're gonna choose our database names as well as our location. So if you're using SQL Express on the delivery controller, you can keep this as default. If you're using SQL Express on another server, just change the host name for, for the location. So remove local hosts and put um, the name of where, where that SQL Express lives. Um, otherwise, if you're using full-blown version of SQL like I am, um, specify the host name for that SQL server in which case you want to do next and it's going to do a, a database um, validation. So just wait a couple seconds for that. And then if that goes well, then it's going to prompt us for our Citrix licensing server. So I don't remember the hosting online. So let's go ahead and 
switch over to it really quick, and I don't know why I just turned cat logs on. Uh, CMD, it would be nice if I could type. So Ryan.lic, should have known that. So call this Ryan LIC. Let's do connect. Um, yep, connect me. All right, so now we can either choose to use an existing license file. So I mentioned this before, you're gonna wanna enter the, the host name of your your delivery controller, all right, then your delivery controller or your license server. It'll tell you when you go through that process on Citrix.com, their website. Um, but for the sake of this video series, I'm just gonna use the 30-day trial because I don't have a production um, license for, for my Citrix environment. Um, so pretty pretty easy, just browse for the license file if you're gonna to add your own, but I'll just use that 30 day trial. And then we're gonna choose finish. And you'll see it's gonna, gonna go through this process of database creation. Um, it's gonna start setting up the site for us. And one important thing to know about your Citrix environment is it's so heavily dependent on your SQL databases. Every change you make in Studio is gonna be stored in SQL. So I repeat, every single change that we make in Studio is gonna be stored in SQL, meaning the delivery controller and SQL server needs constant communication with each other. So what happens if the SQL database goes down? Well, now we can't make any additional changes to our Studio console. So definitely do some type of high availability when it comes to your SQL databases, either do mirroring, always on availability, clustering, um, whatever your preference is. But the good news is if it does go down, Citrix does have some failover processes in place. So we have something called our local host cache on our delivery controller, in which case, we're able to create a soft copy of our database. So if communication goes down, the database goes down, we have a copy of that database on the delivery controller. So users will still be able to connect with existing settings. So pretty good fail safe while we're bringing up our, our database. Um, but you'll see here, so now everything's in, we have our site, we have different options for our machine catalogs our delivery groups, um, we have policy option creation here, um, we have applications, we can create a hosting connection for image management, so, and being able to power manage as well. And then we also have licensing here. So I'm gonna go through these things in our next videos, but we need other components configured before we start the actual configuration of all of these settings. For example, we can't create a machine catalog because we don't have any any agents, any Citrix agents, any workloads. Um, so um, we'll go ahead and we'll stop the video for now. And in the next part of the series, we'll go in and install Storefront and we'll move on from there. All right, so now let's jump on our second delivery controller and let's join that delivery controller to our site we just created. So again, it's gonna be exactly the same process as before. We're going to run that, that ISO that we downloaded earlier. We're gonna choose virtual apps and desktops here. In which case we're gonna choose delivery controller. And literally it's the same process as before. We're gonna choose what we wanna actually install in here, the various core components. So we're gonna deselect storefront, deselect the license server, Keep the rest there. Um, we're not going to install SQL Express because we have, we're utilizing our own SQL database. Let's do next for the ports and install. And again, it's going to go through the prereqs. It's going to ask for a reboot if you don't have the prereqs already there. And once you reboot, if it doesn't auto launch that creation again, relaunch the, the executable walk through the same process and it should pick up where it's left off.
All right, so if everything went as planned, you should see exactly what I'm looking at right now, which again, it's asking for that diagnostic information, but I'll go ahead and skip that. And then on the finished screen, we should see all check marks, which we do. So good to go there. And now it's gonna go ahead and launch the studio console. However, unlike last time, this time we're gonna choose option number three. We're gonna choose to join it to an existing site. So I'll just give that a second as this comes up. And it's gonna be just a different process because we already had that database created. We already have a site there. So we're gonna scale our deployment by choosing connect this delivery group to an existing site. So we're gonna to wanna to put the FQDN of your first delivery controller. So if you don't have that on hand, like I don't remember mine, let's go, you wanna go, go ahead and jump over to that, get the host name of it. And we're going to type that in here. So Ryan.-Citrix, Ryan.Local, and yes, we'd like Studio to update the database automatically. And it should be joining to the site now. So if all goes well, when the end of the bar is done, they'll say, yep, I'm gonna join to the site. And that should be all we need to do from the delivery controller side. So let's just give it a second here. All right, so we are joined to the site. So you'll notice now if we go to configuration and controllers that we'll see both the delivery controllers listed here. So now we have two delivery controllers are in, in our environment and now we're gonna wanna go through the next step, which is before configuring everything since we don't have everything set up yet. So we can't really create machine catalogs and delivery groups. We wanna install um, our agent on our actual workload. So our VDI, our application servers, as well as we want to set up our storefront server for that that access. Um, so we'll kind of go, I guess in a roundabout way, we'll start with the agent first, then we'll go with through storefront, and then we'll start configuring our actual site. If there's any questions, or if you like this video, give me a thumbs up right in the comment box below. Happy to help out. Um, and yeah, thanks everyone.